Amanda Gorman, inaugural poet, rises to inspire America. I am Ingrid Rizzolo, and this is my talk. As I sat looking at the inauguration on TV, at first I was disappointed that there were no black performers. Then there came the first ever poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, Lady Gaga, and J-Lo and Garth Brooks, who graced the stage before her with their larger than life presences, owned their moments. But the moment just before the inauguration was redefined by Amanda Gorman. Gorman stepped up, bringing the warmth of a spring day to a cold winter day in DC. In her yellow Prada coat. We're striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. Young Amanda Gorman delivered an ode not to the incoming president, but to America itself. She offered lyrics of grace to inspire America out of the apathy that was beginning to settle over the American people. That even as we grieve, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hope, that even as we tired, we try, that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat but because we will never again sow division. From the responses in the aftermath of a reading, America knew, America understood, and America agreed that we do have a hill to climb. As she read her poem, A Hurting America, that was in need of a ray of hope, after the shadows cast by the insurrection at the Capitol building two weeks prior, that America listened. Perhaps we were caught by surprise, for until we heard her words, we did not realize that we had been in a state of conditioned inertia for a long time, a way too long time. The Bible says, a little child shall leave them. And the youthful Amanda offered lyrics of grace to aspire the American people out of the apathy that was beginning to settle over us. Amanda issued a call to arms that day. She called to America to lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We can only rise above this rut with our hands linked together for hill climbing is challenging, she seems to be saying. Famed American writer and critic E.B. Wright, writing extensively about the role of writers, said that writers lift people up and they do not merely reflect and interpret life, they inform and shape life. Following this code, Gorman lifted us up and endeavored to inspire us to new perspectives with a kind of poem that called for deep introspection. She led us into introspection with a plethora of rhetorical questions. For instance, she asked, where shall we find the light in this never ending shade? With this type of rhetorical questioning, woman is declaring that we have answers among us, that we should look no further than ourselves. The onus is on us to find the light to light our path, our way out of the shade that history has erected over our present. By questioning rhetorically, Gorman aims to inspire America and the American people, showing that we will come up with solutions to the crisis in which we find ourselves. This crisis of ideological bankruptcy is narcissistic and divisive on many fronts. A P 
patriotic woman also gives her beloved country a vote of confidence by stirring up that patriotism that is in us. She says that America is not over. It continues to be the land of the brave. We can weather this insurrection incident on January 6th and the events that led to the protests of the Black Lives Matter movement and even the ravages of COVID-19 together. This is what she seems to be saying. She's saying that these incidents have not broken us, unquote, for somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. America is still the land of the brave. In her ode to the American people, Gorman also continues to proclaim with passionate optimism that America is still the land of dreams, the land of the American dream, where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president. ...of a country in the time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. In her cell, Gorman personalizes Maya Angelou's dream. Maya Angelou said, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. She also gives physicality to Langston Hughes' darker brother and is promised that, I quote, tomorrow I'll be at the table with com when company comes. And Amanda is an example of the fulfillment of that promise. Langston Hughes, Maya, and others who died in hope could rest in pride. Amanda further inspires America with a call for elevated sight as we gaze into the future and beyond. She concluded her ode to America with a crescendo of hope. As she says, when day comes, we step out of the shade aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it for there is always light, if only we are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn balloons as we free it, for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. Are we as America? brave enough to be the light that engenders that engenders the change to be a more perfect america i am in Zolo and it has been my talk look out for more thought-provoking videos like this in the meanwhile please like subscribe and comment see you later on it's my talk bye for now